Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to Christ our Lord. Now the time came for Elizabeth to be delivered, and she gave birth to a son. And her neighbors and kinsfolk heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they would have named him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, Not so. He shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your kindred is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all marveled. And immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, what then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And with and his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear and in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people and the forgiveness of their sins. For the tender mercy of our God when the day shall dawn upon us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in the spirit, and he was in the wilderness to the day of his manifestation to Israel. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. For starting my uh, homily today, I would like to just give us a little short recap of what's been happening the last few weeks, especially if you haven't been to church in the last few weeks. So just to give you what's going on right now. So this is the third week of Advent as we prepare for Christmas. And the first week of Advent, we had the gospel where it was the announcement to Zechariah that Elizabeth will bear a son. The second week of Advent was the announcement, the Annunciation to Mary, that she is to bear a son, Jesus. And the third week of Advent is the birth of St. John the Baptist. So we have announcement of St. John the Baptist is coming, the announcement of Jesus, and now we have the birth of St. John the Baptist. So in the first week of Advent, we had big news, okay? Huge news for the people that a new prophet is going to be born. So if you know what's been happening for hundreds of years for the Jews, you know, we always have to look at the scripture through the eyes of the way the Jewish people would look at them. For us, we just hear, oh, the birth of John the Baptist, we probably just think, okay, what's the big deal about that? But 500 years went by and they had no prophet. So the Jews had no prophet for 500 years. So it's like God was silent with them for 500 years. There's a lot of division in the Jewish faith, and you have a lot of different subgroups who interpret the scriptures, and all of a sudden, God acts. For there's a, there's a large period of silence, and then God says, right now, I'm going to act with my power. So the, he sends the angel Gabriel, he announces, he says, this is the time your son is going to be the one to witness, the last prophet, to witness to Jesus, the king. And so... So this is big news for the Jewish people, that the fact that John is going to be the prophet that's going to point to Jesus and point to him and tell everyone this is the Messiah, this is like, for Jewish people, this is like the greatest news they've ever heard. And so if we look at today's gospel, 
and we see what's happening. We see that John is, so he, so they, the, so Elizabeth's relatives, they come to her and they're kind of nosy. They're like, what are you going to name this child? And they're like, aren't you going to name him after his father, Zechariah? Because traditionally that's what they would do. And she said, no, his name will be John. And so they were like scandalized by this. They were like, what? You're going to name him John? It's kind of like today when, when you're having a baby and all your relatives, you know, they start bothering you. What are you going to name the child? And then you're going to say some from some soap opera, some Lebanese soap opera or something. I don't know where you're going to name your child. Because I don't know if you've been to baptisms lately. I don't know where your people are getting your names from, just to make a side joke. But where these people are getting their names from, don't curse your child that way. You know, they're going to be scarred their whole life. I don't know what names. But it's always good to give your child a holy name. And so John's name means the grace of God. And so when she said that to them, they were like, no, 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 you're crazy. You can't do this. And so they go to Zechariah. They go to Zechariah and they say to him, what are you going to name this child? And John can't speak because he's mute. He can't speak because the angel made him mute because he didn't believe his words. And then he writes on a tablet, his name is John. And as soon as he does that, his mouth is opened and he praises God for what he's done. And then what happens, the people immediately notice a miracle has just happened and it says they are seized with fear. All of a sudden, all the people of Judea they spread the news, the gossip runs fast, and they spread the news that John is going to be this prophet, and fear seizes the people. So imagine the people, they hear, they know Zechariah is a respected priest. He would never break from tradition and name his child a random name. And then all the people are, are like, there's fear upon them. Why? Because whenever someone encounters God, they start realizing, oh boy, God is doing something. God is acting. That means God is saying to us, he, he's about to be here. We need to change. We need to repent. For them, it was a big news. Alarms were ringing. So it's kind of like when St. Peter, he encounters Jesus, and Jesus tells him, throw the nets ashore, and he pulls in these two uh, nets filled with fish, and, and St. Peter sees the miracle, and he gets on his knees, and he says... He's filled with fear, and he says, depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. So when they see God acting in a powerful way, it brings fear, a good kind of fear, where it's like, oh boy, we need a change, because God is coming. And so it's important to realize that because we need that same encounter. Um, one example I like to give about that is when Our Lady, Mother Mary, appeared at Fatima, and she told the children, she said, on October 13, she said, on this day, I'm going to do a miracle and I'm going to let everyone see it. And so even atheist people who didn't believe, didn't even believe in God, 70,000 people came and it was a rainy day and the sun literally started dancing upon them. A, a huge miracle happens and it was falling upon them and they were filled with the fear of God. And what did people do immediately? They started screaming out their sins out loud in front of everyone because they thought literally it was like God is here. And so whenever someone sometimes encounters God, they're filled with fear to what? To repent. And so this is what's happening to the people. Because for us, the birth of John the Baptist, we're just like, eh, what's that? But for them, it's a sign for us to say, oh, this is it. God is acting. The king is coming. And so St. John the Baptist's role is to prepare the people to repent. So how does he do that? He's going to go, it says he's going to prepare a way in the wilderness, and then he's going to baptize people in the Jordan River. So we have to think about, like, what does that mean? Because we don't know, if we don't know the Bible, we don't know, we don't know kind of, like, what does that even mean? So for the Jews, the idea that he's going into the wilderness, it's like he's going to the place where Moses and the Israelites were because that's where God met them in the desert. And he's going to the Jordan River because the people crossed the Jordan River, which is a symbol of baptism, to get to the Holy Land. So John is showing that there's a new king. He's coming. He wants to wash you from your sins. And he's going to be the king. And he's going to lead you to the new kingdom, the new Holy Land. And so... John the Baptist is going to be this sign to them that the Messiah is coming. So 
in, in today's passage it says that John the Baptist is going to give the tender mercy of our God. So St. John the Baptist is going to show the people how merciful God really is, that he wants to wash away their sins. And so what is, so he starts baptizing them. So I just want to explain a little bit about what is this powerful mercy that Jesus is bringing to the people? What is this grace? Okay, so baptism. So we start baptizing people for the forgiveness of their sins. And a lot of times people don't realize that the grace of baptism is so powerful. Let's say you were an adult. Let's say you weren't baptized as a baby. One example I'd like to give, not to scandalize you, imagine there is a man who's a doctor and he went through a powerful con conversion, but before his conversion, he was an abortionist. He committed 75,000 abortions, okay? Probably, I don't know, maybe as many people live in Shelby Township, okay? He committed 75,000 abortions. He ends up going through a conversion, becomes Catholic, and then he's baptized, okay? He's baptized. Do you think that person can go to heaven? I hope you would think, if he truly repents. So the moment he's baptized, this is what John the Baptist is doing, all of his sins are wiped away. All of them. So sometimes people think as Catholics we're saying that you earn your salvation. Jesus actually came to bring the people salvation as a complete gift. And so what John the Baptist is going to do is going to start this process of baptism. Come into the wilderness, be baptized, and God is going to wash away your sins. And so when Jesus comes, he says, St. John the Baptist says, someone is going to come after me who ranks ahead of me who's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He's going to cleanse your sins. And so St. John the Baptist does this. He's revealing to the people mercy to the Gentiles who they saw as the most evil people. And so it's important that we realize for our own self, what is this grace of God that John the Baptist is preparing us for? He's preparing us for the grace of God. So, so I want us simply to reflect. I want us to think about our sins. I want us to think about what is it at baptism that I received that I have no idea what it was, right? And so every time you walk into this church and you dip your hand in holy water, what does that mean? It's a reminder I've been baptized, right? And I can't take that baptism for granted. Because if I take that baptism for granted, then, then I'm not realizing what Jesus has done for me, that he's washed my sins. And so it's like this. When you go to confession, it's like a second baptism. Just like the words at baptism when the priest blesses you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, when you're in confession, the priest blesses you a second time as if you're being baptized. You're not being baptized again, but he's washing you clean of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And that's a complete gift. So when you walk into the confessional, did you earn confession? No. If you die right after confession, you die in the grace of God. Only So this is what John the Baptist and Jesus are preparing us for, is this mercy that they couldn't comprehend, right? They couldn't comprehend. So John represents this mercy. So as he's preparing us for Christmas, St. John the Baptist is saying to us, what sins does God want to wash you from this Christmas? Because maybe some of you haven't been to confession in 10 years. 20 years, 30 years, because a lot of weddings, every time I do a wedding, I ask a couple, how long has it been? And they tell me, min communion, Abuna, min sense communion. So today, I want you to think, what sins do you have as you're approaching Christmas that Jesus wants to deal with before we enter into the birth of the King, because St. John the Baptist is truly preparing us for that King. Amen.